Um, this morning, I'm going to talk about SIGTRAN, give you a technical overview of uh, the protocols. It's not going to be uh, so much in depth, but I think just enough for you to understand what's a SIGTRAN and what SIGTRAN protocols you can use um, to make an SS7 connection to your SS7 provider instead of using TDM links. So I've got, uh, I'm comparing SIGTRAN protocols to uh, the SS7 protocol stack on TDM. I've got uh, diagrams uh, showing switches connecting to STPs and STPs connecting to STPs. We're going to discuss the advantages of SIGTRAN um, and uh, I will welcome any questions at any time uh, and I'll uh, pause once in a while to ask if you have, uh, you have uh, questions or comments. All right, so I think we have about uh, between 30 and 45 minutes of presentation depending on the, on the questions. So let's uh, get started right away. Um, so I, what I put up here just to, uh, to, to um, familiar, familiarize ourselves this morning with a typical SS7 network, um, what we see here are um, you know, uh, STPs uh, in, the, in the center here with switches, SSPs, on the left-hand side, and we got SCPs. So the uh, SSPs over here, um, as you know, are your uh, voice switches, your uh, class 5 switches, whether they're uh, ribbon, meta switch, redcom, uh, you know, uh, Siemens DCO, DMS, um, if you still have them. And then you've got your signaling transfer points, which you may have yourself, or for sure, your SS7 provider. Um, has STPs in their network. These products are typically provided by uh, Techelec, uh, for example, uh, which is now Oracle, or provided by, um, uh, let's say it could be Ericsson, it could be Nortel uh, STPs. And then here on the right-hand side, you've got uh, SCPs, which are uh, typically in for your uh, application would be uh, like a caller name database, 1-800 database, um, uh, local number portability database that your switches query on a regular basis every day to get this information over the SS7 network. Now, today we're going to be talking about A-links, um, which are just SS7 links between your switches and the SS7 network, and we're going to be talking about B uh, and D-links, bridge links, diagonal links, um, in case you have STPs in your network. Do you have any questions about this before I go on? <clears throat> All right. Um, so let's have a look at uh, the protocol stack uh, right away. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to be talking mostly about M3UA and M2PA. These are uh, two of the many SIGTRAN protocols. There are other SIGTRAN protocols such as M2UA, SUA, IUA to um, uh, connect to, say, different application layer protocols up here. Um, but in, in your application here, I think we're concerned about carrying ISUP um, uh, messages as well as carrying TCAP messages for caller name queries, local number portability uh, queries. So what I did here is comparing it to the uh, SS7 protocol stack using TDM. Um, so just to refresh ourselves about the, uh, uh, the terms here, um, we have MTP1, MTP2, MTP3. Uh, MTP1 is the physical layer, so a DS1, for example, or just a link with a V35 uh, interface in some cases. MTP2 is the transport layer for uh, the upper layer SS7 protocols. MTP2 ensures a reliable uh, link over this DS1 that's set up here. There are a whole bunch of um, connection messages going on at the MTP2 layer, um, but really the uh, uh, SS7 messages that are called NSUs are really start here at the MTP3 layer. This is where you have your point codes, uh, and you have the structure of the messages that go from switch to switch or from STP to STP. Um, and so what I did here, and I 
You know, I, I, I scrunched this uh, down here because uh, really the uh, MTP3, as you can see, should be at the same layer here, but the SS7 doesn't, you know, exactly fit um, into this model, you know, T TCP IP does, um, but not necessarily SS7. Um, so, um, just to be uh, 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 clear about this, uh, the SIGTRAN protocols, such as M3UA and 2PA, are designed to be carried over IP, okay, instead of being uh, carried over TDM uh, connection, so they get carried within a uh, uh, tr uh, transport protocol called SCTP. I'm just going to say a few words about SCTP in the in the coming slide. Um, and uh, well, that's it. Do you have any questions before I go on? No. <clears throat> okay. Very good. So let's have uh, just uh, uh, one slide. Uh, not going to give you a whole bunch of detail about uh, these protocols. Um, I give the RFCs, so all of these protocols are defined by the IETF in uh, request for comment documents. So I put the RFC numbers there, 4960, 4165, and so on. I'm just going to say um, a little bit about each. Um, so the, the transport protocol is called SCTP. Um, it was created... Uh, in order to ensure a reliable and in-sequence delivery of higher, letter, higher layer messages that are encapsulated in SCTP. Um, one of the main advantages of SCTP is that um, it supports multi-homing, which means that um, if we're connecting with an SCTP device across an IP network, that SCTP device can have multiple ports, and we can, using SCTP, we can send messages separately on these ports, and it gets reassembled in sequence at the, at the other end. So it means we can take like different routes to send the messages, and this works really well for, for SS7, because we, we want to have a reliable SS7 connection, because I mean, that's the signaling, right, for your voice traffic. It, it, has, to, uh, it has to be up. Um, and then uh, M2PA, um, which is uh, really the equivalent of an MTP2 link, but over IP. Um, so if you've ever configured, um, say, an SS7 link on TDM, uh, the M2PA configuration is very similar. Um, you can view this as exactly the same thing as an MTP2 link, uh, but over IP. Finally, uh, M3UA is a little bit more complicated, um, but uh, M3UA exists in order to transport higher layer protocols within itself, uh, within M3UA. So those higher layer protocols are like ISUP, SCCP, TCAP. Um, and uh, M3UA also has, and I'll talk about it in a moment, um, the uh, particularity that it, um, it has like a client server model to it. It's like one end of the M3UA connection or association is the master, um, and the other side is the slave. And I'll talk a bit about that. Any questions? OK. So, uh, right away, um, so what I'm going to show here in these next two slides is give you, yeah? Oh, sure. On SCTP, we talked about multi homing So, what you're saying is that if I have a connection to New Jersey and one to Massachusetts, that my message can go over both? Or is it one message? Yeah. Yeah, uh, good question. So the, so the question is, is if I have, um, uh, I'm setting up, a, uh, I'm using SCTP to communicate with two SS7 devices in two different geographical locations, right? Can I use multi-homing? I think they, the answer is no. You can use multi-homing on one and multi-homing on the other. But because they're separate systems, right, they, they say don't know about each other. They don't reassemble messages. Right? So the multi-homing is 
to one node. Okay. What would determine if something's going to go one link or the other? <clears throat> and like, why would you fragment a message? Why would you do that? Why would you take them both ways? I mean, it sounds like a nice feature, but why? Yeah. A very good question. So, so what determines if you fragment a message and you send it on, on different paths? Um, SCTP uh, supports uh, uh, multi-homing, um, but it also supports two modes. Um, one is low sharing, and the other one is active standby. Right? So in active standby, you always send one right, until you find out it's down or unreachable, and then you start sending to the other. And then on, on the other way is load sharing. Well, you send on both at the same time. And I think your, the decision of um, sending on both at the same time would be one based on bandwidth, right? If, if you, um, if you uh, um, thought that maybe through one connection, you wouldn't be able to get enough bandwidth, uh, you'd send on both. We're talking about a 64K link here. I know, I, yeah. So keep going. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it, it probably yeah. doesn't happen much. No, no, it really, it doesn't. And the deployments that um, uh, we've made uh, are usually active standby. Makes sense. Yeah, I think it does too. Yeah. But I mean, the, the pe people that design these protocols, right? They they think of everything and they try to make it perfect. <laughs> Excuse me. Sometimes in in real life, you don't use everything. <laughs> Okay, um, in these next two slides, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, show you a, f a few of the messages uh, related to setting up an M2PA connection, and on the next slide, on setting up an M3UA uh, connection. So this one here is about M2PA, and what I'm showing here is two SS7 nodes that are using an IP network over SCTP, and they have implemented an M2PA layer, and on top of that, you've got MTB3 layer. So these, and the terms in SIGTRAN are IPSP, right? Uh, IP signaling point. Um, but this could be two STPs. It could be uh, a switch and an STP. Uh, it could be two switches if you're setting up an F-link between the, the switches. And just to give you an idea of um, what's going on here, when uh, it actually the, what these protocols define are messages. Um, so I'm showing the mess, uh, giving you an idea of the messages going between these two nodes uh, on the left and on the right. So first of all, when you set up uh, such a SIGTRAN connection, uh, you need to set up the SCTP layer. And so there's an init message that gets sent, and there's an init acknowledgement that goes the other way. And then you need to set up the MTP2, uh, and then you need to set up the MTP2 and M2PA layer. But in fact, in M2PA, like I, I like I explain, um, there's really not much to it. It's just like a regular SS7 link on TDM, but over IP. So as soon as the SCTP connection is up, you can start sending your messages. If some of you know about SS7 messages, we have, uh, f we, on a TDM link, we have FISUs, we have LSSUs, and we have MSUs. In this case, we don't have FISUs, which are fill-in sig signal units, um, but, in, but we still keep LSUs and MSUs. MSUs are the actual message, right? So if you're setting up a call and you're sending um, an ISUP initial address message, it's packaged into an MSU, into N2PA, and sent over SCTP. <clears throat> All right? And then here, just showing how the SCTP connection gets shut down. But once it's deployed, typically it never does. <clears throat> Any questions about this? And, and the reason I show this to you is um, so that you, you, you get an, I an idea of the different layers and how it translates into real life. You know, there are, uh, and you can capture these signaling messages, and you can, if you capture them, you can open them in Wireshark, and you can view them, and you can view all the parameters inside these protocols. Next is, a console port? How does that work on this? Uh, uh, do we have a console port? 
I, I think it depends on the devices. In the case of our devices, the signaling gateways we manufacture um, through uh, 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 remote access to the device or through SSH. a console port. Yeah, SSH, SSH you do start the signaling catcher. Okay. And Maybe what it produces a is, is a PCAP file that you can open in Wireshark. Cool. Other vendors in, instead will, will capture the messages and they'll present it in a text file. A Wireshark would actually understand Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. You, you try it, you'll see. Um, okay, uh, now M3UA. M3UA is different. If, 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 you know, I said there's like a, it's a client server model. Um, we, we have one side that of the M3UA connection, which is established here, um, is like the, the server. And the other side is the client, the signaling gateway. And they're called signaling gateway process and application server process. So <clears throat> these two boxes here are like SS7 nodes in a network. Typically, this is a switch that supports <coughs> the UA, and this would be a signaling gateway. And the, and the purpose of the signaling gateway is to convert from SS7 over IP using M3 UA to SS7 over TDM. Right, where we have the typical uh, MTP2 and MTP3 layers of SS7, and the signaling gateway uses a NIF, which is a network interworking function, um, in order to convert, you know, uh, unpackage what's received over M3UA and repackage it to send it uh, over the TDM network. Let's have a look at the messages that are sent. Um, so the ASP side is the master. Um, so we still have this SCTP um, uh, connection being set up. Um, but then the ASP sends an ASP up message. Of course, there's an acknowledgement. And then there's an ASP active message followed by an acknowledgement. Once this is done, then messages can be sent across from one side to the other or uh, the other side to the first side. Do you have any questions? <coughs> no, this enables us to do is to wrap in a few more protocols into the SS, into the stack before we throw it on the Yeah. I mean, you can, the SS7 but, network there, and, yeah. and that looks like TDM, right? It is. Why? That's TDM over here. Uh, because, the, the, because the purpose of this signaling, so, so why is there TDM here? The, it's because the purpose of the signaling gateway is to convert between SS7 over IP and SS7 over TDM. And I'm going to be In using cases this. where you have a switch, I can't do the... Exactly, yeah. and that's where I'm going with this. We're going to look at diagrams where um, what if the switch doesn't support SIGTRAN? Nice. What can we do? And we use a signal. Okay. okay. Gotcha. Um, so, uh, so, like I said at the beginning, uh, some of you may have a switch uh, with a pair of A-links uh, to your SS7 provider. Uh, something like this. Um, some of you may have STPs within your network, and I've got slides on that as well. But first, let, let's start with this here. So what I'm showing here is an SS7 provider, um, typically has two STPs in two different locations, like Steve was saying um, uh, earlier. And this is your switch, your uh, Siemens uh, switch, DMS switch, uh, your meta switch, uh, your ribbon switch, and if you're using SS7 TDM connections, well, your A links, which defines uh, SS7 link between an SSP and an STP, um, is typically over two T1 leased lines on which you use one. DS0 of 56 or 64 kilobit per second to transport the MTP2 link. Um, and uh, you, you may be, your SS7 provider <clears throat> may be approaching you to migrate this to an SS7 over IP. Or you may want to migrate this 
to SS7 over IP because you can realize some cost savings. And there are other advantages that I'll uh, talk about a bit as well. So let's have a look. Um, this this uh, first part here uh, doesn't involve um, uh, Telco Bridges products, right? Uh, if your switch supports M3UA and your SS7 provider supports M3UA, um, then you can uh, implement an IP connection. Um, for example, if I remember correctly, the MetaSwitch CFS supports M3UA. Um, and it, and uh, then you need to set up an IP connection between your location and the two STP um, locations. And this IP connection um, can be set up over a private IP connection or it can be set up over the public internet um, using a VPN. Um, and uh, we've uh, been deploying our products, we, we've seen both of these. Um, I think it's a, it's a matter of choice. Um, I think the, the important thing here is just like your typical uh, SS7 A-Links on DS1s is um, you should think of having two connections, right? Ideally, you have an a, a IP connection using one route to uh, MPLS network or connection to the internet and you have another IP connection uh, using a diverse route uh, to the IP network. And if your switch supports M3UA, and I didn't put it on this slide, sorry, that the switch will be the ASP side. It's the application server process and the, a and the STP will implement um, the signaling gateway process, the SGP side. All right. So, so um, my one one question that, that has always come up is, okay, can I do one of those links as a SIGTRAN link and the other link as a SS, TDM SS7 link? Yes, yeah, very good question. So, so the question is, can I uh, have uh, uh, one A-link over IP and the other A-link over TDM? And the answer is yes. Uh, uh, absolutely, of course, the, the switch needs to support it, right? So the for the so let's say this is the IP connection. So the IP connection will use M3UA um, to deliver the messages to the ISUP layer. <coughs> but if this other connection is TDM, then the switch also needs to Im implement MTP2, MTP3, and finally to deliver the, the messages to ISUP. But the, the answer is yes, you can, and in fact, um, in, in, in when deploying this, uh, it's, uh, uh, it would be recommended to do it that way. <coughs> the, only, the only challenge is the provider, the SS7 provider, does not want to do that because they're sending it to a different STP pair, and um, they're only going to want to use SIGTRAN or TDM. That's my experience. <laughs> really? Okay, I, I didn't know. Because I wanted to do the TDM on one and, and the sync train on the other, but they said we can't do that. And you, and you look at their network and, and they're going to different places. Oh, yeah, okay. I, uh, I didn't know that, Steve. So, Steve is saying that often the <coughs> seven provider here um, um, will use different STPs to support the. TDM connections and the SIGTRAN connections. In the, in the deployments that uh, we've made, um, one of them that I remember is with TNS, and I suppose the SS7 provider was TNS, and uh, uh, they were able to do that in, in one case that I remember. And in another case in California, the customer had to, say, cut over. I was going to say that the provider was TNS that I was talking to. Oh, really? So maybe they've done it and they don't want to anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Know. Okay. It, it could be. Uh, it could be. But, you know, from uh, thank you for, for the input. Uh, but, you know, from a, from a protocol point of view or from a technology pro point of view, there's nothing preventing it. So maybe there may be commercial. Well, that was my uh, point. 
Yeah. You know, yeah, I think it's commercial. Yeah. Yeah. From our perspective, we're at the edge, right? We're receiving the A lines. Yeah. SS7 providers migrating to SIGTRAN. Do you know if they're doing some kind of a conversion, like a blade perhaps in an existing uh, piece of equipment? Or <coughs> what I suspect they're doing is they have newer equipment in one location, the old equipment in the other location, yeah. and then you have to go to one or the other. Technically, a lot of things are possible, right? But like you're saying, policy, no, I'm not doing that, which is fine. Do you have any exposure to that? Do you have any idea how they're migrating that little piece? Because that impacts how we, you know, kind of... Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think your, your question is how is the SS7 provider implementing SIGTRAN, you know, versus TDM? And, and I know about the Tekelec Eagle STP. Uh, and in their case, the uh, STP requires a special card so for SIGTRAN, a blade that so so is required. So the same destination, though. Yeah, same, same machine, okay. same system, but it requires. Uh, a card that's different from uh, the, the card. card maybe. That's yeah, and well, uh, I, I suppose that that card also implements, you know, these protocols. It has CPUs and runs these protocols uh, as well. So, I, uh, but I can only talk about the the Eagle STP. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Okay, let's, let, and you'll see this slide uh, will be very similar. Mm -hmm. The only difference is we're using M2PA instead of M3UA. Um, and uh, in the case where, so for sure, okay, any SS7 provider, uh, if, if their STPs support SIGTRAN, for sure it supports M2PA. Okay, you may have other STPs that uh, may, may not support M3UA, um, but for sure, if the STP devices they use support SIGTRAN, they'll support M2PA. Okay, and the, the, the difference, and the, the difference between this solution and the previous solution um, from a, a protocol point of view is that we're just implementing different protocols, okay? Uh, the, the idea is to deliver, and here I'm just showing ISAP at a higher layer, but there's also a CCP TCAP for caller name queries, local number portability queries, and 1-800 database queries. Um, uh, and, but from a, a functionality point of view, it's the same as the previous slide, okay? In this case, there are no advantages in using M3UA or M2PA if your switch supports any of these two protocols. If I'm understanding this correctly, and I probably should do a little more reading, we're not actually moving the ISO-TDM circuit, we're just moving the signal. We're just moving the signal. All of the ISO circuits, yeah. they remain. They still are. Where they are. TDM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. TDM. One is yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. I'm not showing the ISAP circuits uh, here. Thank you. Just a naval encapsulation of the ISAP messages. That's it. It's beyond, a beyond the standard SS7 query kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a different transport solution. That's, That's it. It's not to be discounted. These things are great. Yes, and here are some of the advantages of using SIGTRAN um, versus uh, uh, TDM. Um, and there, there are a, a few here, and uh, maybe some of you have some experience with this. Um, the, I think uh, the first two I put up there um, is, I think are important, is that um, you can benefit from the built-in redundancy of IP networks. You know, if you're using MPLS, right, there are all different architectures in a ring and, and all of this stuff, and if you're using the internet, you've got routers and it's always up, you know, uh, and so if uh, if your if an IP packet enters the network and there's a router down, usually there's another way to go around it, thanks to IP routing and, and the design of IP networks. Um, the other advantage is that there's almost unlimited bandwidth. You were mentioning earlier, you know, hey, it's a 56k connection. Uh, uh, yeah, 
there's, I think, no problem at all, you know, providing enough bandwidth to carry these messages. But, I uh, don't know if it's your case, um, mobile operators are uh, typically seeing a growth in SS7 traffic due to SMSs, text messages. Um, so, the TDM solution was to put in more SS7 links, right? To go 1 times 56 to 2 times 56, 3, 4, you know, maybe a high-speed link, that's SS7 high-speed link, which would take the full T1. Now, um, if you're using IP, um, it's, uh, it, it, there's almost unlimited bandwidth with respect to SS7 messages, right? It's not like transporting video. We have like a, on a SIP binding, SIP connection, we have uh, an agreed upon SLA, the amount of connections you can have, connectivity between point A and point B. Do you say something similar in this? Or they just say, no, we got it, you can have it, use as much as you need. Yeah, so, so the question is, um, uh, when you connect to the SS7 network, is there, say if I put it this way, a certain amount of traffic that you can send, right? And yes, the SS7 providers uh, will in the contract, right? You will pay for a certain amount of traffic. Because you're coming into that market by not adding those additional SS7 links, right? Because they're not getting revenue from them. Same thing with those T1s. Um, what did they measure? They measure transactions per second. So you pay <coughs> for a certain number of transactions per second, and those are SS7 messages. You know, the ISUP initial address message and uh, address complete message of an ISUP call. So you pay for a certain amount of transactions per second, and if you go beyond that, you pay a bit more. Uh, and depending on the SS7 provider, if you go beyond this threshold, they may charge you a fraction of a cent per additional uh, uh, transaction. They won't block it? No, they don't block it. Yeah, okay, well, just what, what, I've, what I've seen is that um, let's, say, let's say we put up a DS1 data uh, You basically can fill that up you know, with traffic and they'll, and they'll take it. I've never seen, uh, seen any kind of uh, bandwidth limitations. And I think it's on, it's on the transactional cost is where they're, they're going to get you. Is, is you send as much as you want, and I'm going to charge you as much as you send me. But I've, I've never seen that. Yeah. I, you I, see, the, in cases where we're not going to get, which would be an SMS message, right? Standard rather kind of messaging, and I said for that matter, that's where they're just saying you have, you just going to do with that bandwidth what you want. Right. But in the case of dips, is where they're charging. It's all new. <laughs> That's it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, we're um, looking at the time. We're 33 minutes into this. I've got more slides, but no, it's great. I think the the, the discussion is is uh, is important. Um, you can realize cost savings by moving from SS7 over TDM to SS7 over IP, and and the, I think that the largest cost savings is the elimination of DS1. Uh, you know, your, your T1s there on which you're using one time slot for your links, if they're going from, you know, one state to another state, you're paying a monthly recurring cost for that. You can eliminate that. Um, of course, you've got an IP connection, but usually you will already have that, right? You have a connection to the internet or have a connection to some IP network, and it'll be typically less expensive than your DS1 lease lines that may go from one state to another. Also, the other thing is, um, uh, maybe some of you uh, <coughs> have experience with this, the, the SS7 providers will charge you for a SIGTRAN port on their STP, and I believe that port cost is less than a TDM port cost or an MTP2 link port cost. And to give you an idea, what I've seen or uh, is like $200 per month for a SIGTRAN port um, on an STP. So if you're going to two STPs, you've got $200, $200.
you may be multi-homing, $200, $200, and then $200, $200. Right? You, if you want to give you an idea, you can compare that to uh, uh, your TDM prices. Not the same one here, right? Uh, and another significant advantage here, uh, but it's uh, it's a softer uh, advantage. It's about flexibility. Um, you know, if you want to change your SS7 connections, um, or you wanted to move to another SS7 service provider from one to the other, using TDM, you've got to deploy circuits, right? You've got to deploy T1s, and it can take a couple months to, to deploy a, a T1 lease line. Whereas, if you're using SyncTran and therefore an IP, network, it's just reconfiguration, right? Maybe you reconfigure your VPN, you change the destination IP address, you change the, a bit of the configuration, you're, you're not involved in, you know, de dealing with some, uh, uh, getting a lease line between two points, all right? And flexibility to move uh, from one ser SS7 service provider to another. If you're using the IP, Network really doesn't matter where the SDPs are, right? Versus T1 lease lines that are going, I don't know, to Colorado, and I got to move them to, you know, uh, California. So those are the, the main advantages of using SigTrend. Are they still trying to test them over a period of days and weeks before they allow them to use? Yes. Do they still allow them to, to test them between days or weeks? Yes, they, they do, that. do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it gives, uh, I mean, it's so, it's so important, right? <laughs> it is important, but I don't get the, the reason for testing the days and weeks. Is that still your experience? It's, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. You, just, for, just, I, I think it's just... Um, a, so let's go on. So, you know, I use the, so it could be that your switch doesn't support SigTran. Uh, uh, and this is where our solutions come into play in the use of a signaling gateway. So I used everything on the slides prior to this, uh, uh, suppose that your switch supported SIGTRAN, uh, and I used it to show the advantages and get discussing about the protocols. Um, so what if your switch doesn't support SIGTRAN? Well, um, we can use a device, what's called a signaling gateway. Um, we are a manufacturer of uh, media gateways, uh, transcoding gateways, signaling gateways. And uh, one of the devices that we use for this, and the main device that we use for this, is called the TMG800. Okay? And um, if you recall, the, the signaling gateway uh, needs to provide TDM on one side, uh, right? And it needs to support IP with SIGTRAN on the other side. Um, so this is what the TMG800 does. It can provide up to 16 uh, T1 ports towards your switch that doesn't support SIGTRAN, um, and it can support up to 64 MTP2 links, uh, and it's, of course it supports SCTP, M2P8, and 3 ua If the switch is capable, can you aggregate the DS0s for different SS7 links on the uh on a yes, if the switch is capable, you could use one T1 and configure up to 24 okay. time slots. Yeah, you have total flexibility. Okay, so uh, uh, same diagram as previously. What if your switch doesn't support uh, SIGTRAN um, and you want to make a SIGTRAN connection to your SS7 provider here? And in this example, I'm going to use M3UA, and I've got another example where I'm using M2PA, and it's different. Okay, and there, are, there, uh, yeah, and you'll, you, I'll explain, and you'll see. So uh, the solution is to put in two signaling gateways um, for redundancy. Uh, set up your A-links on uh, one A-link on each device, and. Um, set up the uh, IP network connection <coughs> and the gateways here are implementing M3UA connecting with the STPs uh, using M3UA. Uh, 
I made a point here of um, showing that the STP here implements the signaling gateway process. And if you recall on M3UA, one side has to be the ASP, it's a client server. In our experience, um, the STPs that we face uh, only implement the signaling gateway process side of the connection. Um, so what we need to do here is, um, because we want to be, in order to avoid the introduction of new point codes, um, we need to bring up this connection, right? And if you recall, there's this ASP up. ASP active message. Um, and so we've uh, had to uh, uh, modify the protocol stack a bit in order to bring up this connection to satisfy the SGP side. And the advantage of doing that is that, well, I, there are no new point codes involved, which will not be the case with uh, the use of M2P. Okay? And it's 100% transparent to the switch, right? The, all of the um, SS7 configurations, your destination point codes, and, and nothing changes here, and nothing changes here on the SS7 <coughs> provider side except for the configuration of M3UA. But all of the SS7 routes and everything else is, uh, uh, remains unchanged. So if I'm getting this correct, if you want to replace your ALANX, M2PA is great. But if I want to do ISAP messages, I have to set another set of links. If you wanted to send ISAP messages, yeah. well, uh, send no. You wait right on top of them to No, 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 no. Uh, so setting up uh, this N3UA connection between the two will allow to send all upper layer messages across this connection. ISAP, uh, 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 your local number portability queries, okay, caller so name. It, it's a solution it's for all SS7 messages. Depending on what you want to do. So yeah. you don't have to have both. It's one, if I have M3UA, I have yes. M3UA. Yes, yes, correct. Yes, your solution, it, it, there are two possible solutions to perform a SIGTRAN connection with this S7 provider, and now that's M3UA or M2PA. Thank you. Yeah. And here I'm showing M3UA. On the next slide, I'll show the use of M2PA. Okay? And so let's have a look at that right away. Same setup. Okay? We use signaling gateways. Uh, we connect our TDM, SS7 over TDM, to satisfy the switch. We use the IP connection. Um, and uh, but in this case, we're using N2PA. The advantage is that, uh, as I, I was trying to say earlier uh, during the presentation, N2PA is very simple. It's the, the you know there's the configuration is easy, the troubleshooting is easy because it's just like an SS7 TDM link, but it's over IP. But there are drawbacks um, and. Uh, the reason I show it is that, well, you may be facing an SS7 provider that doesn't support M3UA. It, it can happen. Um, and so in this case, um, these TMG800 units, they implement the MTP3 layer, right? Because above M2PA, if you recall from the stack, there's an MTP3 layer, so they will require point code and they will be functioning as STPs in the network. So you're introducing a pair of STPs here. Um, so you need the configure to, you have configuration changes in your switch to point to new point codes. You have to configure um, uh, DPCs and the STPs. You have to manage the configuration. Um, and there are configuration <coughs> changes here at the SS7 or MTP3 layer in the STPs, okay? Um, we've, we've done this, uh, we've, we've done this many times. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's not so difficult, but it's not transparent. So basically you're setting up a, a dummy point code between the switch and the TMG. And, and it's, not, it's not a registered uh, okay, yeah, uh, Steve's question is, uh, so are, are you setting up a dummy point code here or register? We're setting up a registered point code. 
you have to use new point codes. Our devices do not support point code emulation or point code nanning, if you want to call it that way. Uh, so it's a, it's a real point code that becomes, you know, a part of the SSM network. Because you're acting as an STP. Correct. You're going to pass that point code through. Got it. Correct. Yeah. But, you, you know, it, 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 in the deployments we've made like this, it's, it's, um, it's, not, it's a bit disruptive because, you know, maybe this has been installed, right, for years, years, and the SS7 configuration hasn't changed. Um, uh, and so, uh, maybe some people don't remember exactly how to make changes here. Uh, maybe that person has left the planet. Something like that, uh, yeah, yeah. But we, but for for, for smaller service providers, it's you know it, it, it's not like you you have hundreds of of DPCs, right? So you don't have so many um, SS seven routes. So it's it's manageable. Uh, it's manageable still. I don't get why you, on M three UA you don't have to do the same thing. Okay, on M3UA we don't have to do the same thing because if you recall in, in one of the diagrams I had, there, there was this network interworking function, a NIF. So we, the messages that come in M3UA just get unpackaged and they get repackaged uh, over uh, MTP3 and MTP2. Here, it, it's not. It's not. This, it's not the same because the MTP3 layer sits above this, okay, and and the the MSU, the SS7 message, needs to be routed. And Mark, I have eight connectors. Okay, very good. Uh, so uh, j just briefly uh, talked about TMG800. I uh, just want to show you what it looks like, okay? But because your pictures are pictures are good in my opinion. Um, this device has T1 ports, up to 16 of them, and it has six Ethernet ports. Um, these T1 ports are used to connect to the switch um, with uh, your SS7 TDM links, right? So you, we can provide this device with one, two, three, four T1s. Uh, enable whatever uh, is needed the, uh, with a, any number of SS7 links on these T1s and then we use the uh, uh, Ethernet ports here for the SIGTRAN traffic um, and so there are lots of ports, well lots, there are six ports uh, typically we use two of them for management for redundancy, the device is configured through a web portal and we use two Ethernet ports for the SIGTRAN traffic in order to have redundancy. And here I'm showing uh, redundant power supplies, but minus 48 volt DC is available. So, and it's just a 1U device. AC DC option? Yes. Yeah, so uh, AC or minus 48 volt DC. So, the reason I showed, I wanted to give you an idea of what it was exactly. Um, I think I'm, I'm uh, well, maybe I'll, I'll go through this quickly. Um, I said at the beginning, in your, well, in your network, uh, some of you may have your own STPs and you're uh, connecting to the SS7 providers. Uh, STP, is, is it the case for any of you uh, in here? Yeah? Okay. Um, and typically, you know, you, you have uh, uh, a fully meshed connection, right, between these, uh, <coughs> the, you have, you're using four, typically four T1s uh, to establish the connection. Uh, this can be uh, replaced just like the, the previous uh, solution um, uh, using a signaling gateway. Okay, it's, it's exactly the same. Uh, we use M3UA in this case. Uh, has the same advantages. It's 100% transparent. Um, the idea here is to take SS7 over IP, convert it to SS7 over TDM for the STPs. And we still have you know, the, the fully meshed connection here like that. Same idea. And of course, 
uh, you can do the same using M2PA. And I'm just going to show it because it's uh, we've discussed it already. Uh, again, it's this is not transparent, right? Here we're implementing another pair of STPs because we're using M2PA. Okay, I think maybe this will be my last slide, uh, and, and maybe we'll have uh, uh, some, some discussions uh, about this. So we, we mentioned it earlier. Um, if you want to move your SS7 TDM connections to SIGTRAN, you have two <coughs> protocol choices, M3UA or M2PA. Both achieve the same result, uh, but M3UA is less disruptive. Like I explained, you know, no new point codes, switch doesn't see anything, uh, nothing is, uh, nothing changes, you know, from the SS7 provider's point of view and the switch, uh, switch's point of view. Um, if you do this, uh, you need, among other things, you need to, to plan the, the implementation, uh, you need to, to plan on obtaining IP connections. Uh, it, I, I think it, it can be an undertaking, it can take some time. Uh, you need to think about obtaining IP addresses, uh, possibly route diversity, you know, as, as showing on each of these diagrams two IP connections. Uh, ideally, you know, one goes out the front of the building, the other one goes out the back of the building, but it also goes beyond that, you know, within the IP network. You, you want to uh, ideally ensure there's uh, route diversity, there need a certain level of quality of service uh, so that your uh, SS7 messages going over IP are, are not overwhelmed by you know, someone downloading movies or other internet traffic if you're using the internet with a VPN um, and therefore you need routers that support uh, VPNs, or v VPN uh, protocol, uh, which that should be a difficulty, uh, but still you need to plan for the it. VPNs are going to your SS7 provider, right? Yes, correct. Do they yeah. give you the spec on what they Yes, they, the SS7 provider gives, gives the spec on which protocol uh, they want to use for that. Yeah, typically it's IPsec that, that's used and should, should be easy to, to, you know, the routers or whatever devices you have, but uh, that shouldn't be a problem, but still you need to be aware of it. Um, and uh, although St Steve said that, you know, uh, some SS7 providers may not want uh, to do this, but ideally you'd want to do this, um, but, and I think it's just mainly because, well, you've had these TDM connections forever, uh, and you're moving to IP, it's new. Maybe it's a, a new IP provider. It's the first time you're sending, uh, you're using SCTP over these IP connections, right? So you want to put one on, and you want to let it go for a while uh, to 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 see how it goes. You know, maybe uh, the the traffic gets affected over time, depending on the day of the week, depending on what kind of traffic. So ideally, you'd want to do that. Keep your TDN and keep an I, have an IP connection at the same time for for some time, sometimes a, a couple point, of weeks at least, I think. I think to Steve's point, you're saying split in the same destination, one IP, one TDM. In this case, they're forcing you another point card, it's none of that business. Can you repeat? The I said in, in Steve's example, he was talking about the same destination, but taking one TDM. You typically have more than one A-link going out, right? Yes. In Steve's example, correct me if I'm wrong, he was talking about leaving one uh, TDM one one uh, IP forever. In a case where you're oh. where you're gathering new point codes, it's none of their business if you've got TDM over mm -hmm. here and IP over there, and then you disconnect the TDM at that point, right? So yes, it's two different scenarios. Right? Yes, two different scenarios. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You you may be changing, let's say, SS seven providers, right? Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and you're with a new one, you're going SS seven over IP, and you stay with that one, and at some point you you disconnect. Yeah, uh, and if you're using a signaling gateway, well, you, you need to think about the integration of the signaling gateway into the operations, you know, the, 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 the 
people need to, to be trained to configure it, to manage and troubleshoot it. It's not very difficult. Uh, uh, but you need to collect um, SNMP alarms. You want to know if the uh, link up, link down. Uh, you need to, uh, people need to be able to use the troubleshooting tools, the signaling capture tools, and so on. Um, so just uh, um, a, a couple notes on you need to, to do a bit of planning, but it's, it's not very difficult. I'm going to skip this. Thank you very much. Steve uh, has a question. Uh, just, just from the experience on SIGTRAN, uh, one of the things that you really need to look at is the latency. Uh -huh. uh, when you're coming back because uh, SSM is a little more sensitive on time. Uh, and so uh, I did one where I was using a pseudo wire, uh, yeah. and it was painful. Yes, I can imagine. Yes, uh, I think pseudo wire or circuit emulation solutions are very good if you have 100% control on the IP connection. Um, uh, otherwise, it's going it, to the, the devices cannot regenerate the T1 exactly the way it came in at the other end, and that's why the SCTP protocol exists. Right? to provide reliable and in-sequence delivery in case of packet loss uh, you know, or delay. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. And then the other, the other challenge I had was uh, routing over the IP link, you know, uh, is sometimes the providers down the road, they're switching to different, different nodes within, their, you know, within the internet, and so that latency starts to grow. Yeah, and I didn't put it up there. I didn't have latency, but the, I'll mention it. I think what, what we recommend is like 50 milliseconds or less. And a 56k transfer rate. Yeah. I'm going to use that blows my car. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm going to give you my car. We're well, running out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you, for thank you very 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 that was good. Thank you. All right. My pleasure. Oh,